Okay, so welcome back. Now, in a previous set of videos, uh, we looked at simulating a real-world electrical engineering problem, which was modeling a electric power system. And if you're familiar with electricity, you're familiar with generators and transformers and power lines. And we looked at modeling an actual um, electric power system so you could simulate and see how much, what the voltages were and what the power flows are on the lines and that kind of thing. And as part of that, we developed a, um, an, some input data to model each component, the impedances and um, the megawatts and megabars and all that. As input data, we, we used a comma-separated value file, a CSV file. And that's fairly common in the engineering world where you use CSV files for input, where the user can input uh, data. And what we did is, um, for example, I've got here a CSV file in Notepad++, and you can see it's basically, it's got a header that gives names to each, each uh, column of values, and it's got rows that represent individual components, for example. And the first component has an element type of minus one, a status of one, a bin number of minus one, and uh, is fault value of zero. So what we did is we took this CSV file and we showed how you can very quickly and easily map those values to corresponding properties in a class or an object, an instantiation of a class in your C sharp code. And you can see here, I've got the same um, header names as I do the property names. And if you do that, it makes it very simple. So we can use a, um, a NuGet package called CSV Helper, and it will automatically map each line to a new instantiation of this, uh, in this case, this elements class, a new object. And since the names are the same, the properties and the header names are the same, it will know to map to the first uh, elements object, minus one to the element type, one to the status, minus one to the bin number, and zero to the is fault, okay? So what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to kind of step back and get a more comprehensive view about data in general and how you can handle it. Whether you should use CSV files, maybe you should use the database, um, and we're also going to look at generating CSV files and how you can quickly do it. In this case, we're going to use Excel where I can generate, for example, if I want to do a time simulation, I can very quickly generate time values. And then in this case, I'm doing a sine X over X and I'm graphing that. And I've got two separate um, sine X over X functions I'm graphing. And then you can very quickly convert that into a CSV file like this and bring it into your software and you can map it and everything else. So um, we're also going to talk about, for in this case, I've got, a, um, I've got this elements class. And what I've done is I have written some very quick code to take that CSV file we just showed with the element type status bus number and is fault and put it into this data grid view in your Windows Forms application, very quick and easy. So we're gonna talk about that and how to do that. Now, I encourage you, if you like any of these videos and would like to see them continue, um, please uh, hit the subscribe button and the like button and the bell notifications and all of that. And most of all, if you, if you think there are other people who might benefit from these or might enjoy them, please let them know either on the forums or wherever um, so we can continue this. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate a CSV file and, and see how very quick and easy it is. And for this, we're going to use a spreadsheet. I'm going to use Excel. You can use OpenOffice or whatever, uh, LibreOffice. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to generate a um, time simulation. So we're going to have time steps every, say, half a second. So I'll put 1.0 and um, we'll drag over these to select these two, and then it automatically knows that we want half a second time step, and we'll run it out to about 20 seconds right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, calculate sine x over x equals sine 
and we're going to do a1 over a1. And I've got to divide by 0, so I'll make this point, point zero, 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 0.0001, just so it doesn't complain. And then here I've got the equation, and if you're familiar with Excel, you know that I can fill in all of those 20 seconds worth of data by just double-clicking on this bottom right-hand corner, the plus. And you can see it automatically fills in down to the end of the range. So, very nice. Now I can do the same thing here. I can drag this over and it will copy that um, value, that equation. But what I want to do is I want to change the equation and make it a little bit different. But I've got the basics. So let's say I want um, minus 2 times sine of a over a. Okay, so it will give me, so I've got a plus and then I've got a minus 2. So double click and now I've got my two, I've got my two simulations. So now what I can do is I can generate a um, chart and I showed before in a previous video, um, I'm going to insert charts and I have to do an XY scatter as you saw in one of my previous videos. XY scatter and there you go, you've got the uh, scatter chart. And there you get your two values plotted. So now, let's say I want to take these three columns and generate a CSV file. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I can file, save as, and what I want to do is I want to select, not Excel workbook, but I want to go down to CSV. And I'm going to call this test. CSV. And it will complain because um, you can see this Excel has multiple sheets down at the bottom here. And it's just saying the CSV doesn't support multiple sheets. That's fine. Just say OK. And then uh, there are certain features in the spreadsheet that don't appear in the CSV. Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. So now I've just created a CSV file. So here is my CSV file that has these values. You can see the same thing, 0.51, it's got those values. So very quick and easy way to generate a CSV file. Okay, so now that I've generated my CSV file, it's basically a text file with commas, separated values, and a header file. So now that I've got this, how am I going to bring this into my C Sharp Windows Forms application? Well, it's very simple. I'm um, starting up. I'm going to do a Windows Forms.net framework. And I'm going to call it CSV Input Test. So here we've got our Windows Forms. I'm going to go to Form 1, hit F7. And this is our code, OK? Now, um, the first thing I want to do is um, I'm going to need to develop a class where each object uh, represents one line or one row of this CSV file. Okay, so I'm going to call it, I'm going to go up here, left click, add, new item, and I'm going to select a class and I'm going to call it elements. So now I've got an elements class, and I'm going to make it public so everybody can access it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop four properties called element type, status, bin number, and is fault. Okay? So prop, tab, tab, int, element, element type. I'm going to do prop. Status, I'm do prop bin number, and I'm going to do prop is fault. So now I have got my class that is going to receive, the properties are going to receive the values from each of these. So, now what do I need to do? Well, um, 
we're going to need, well, first of all, I'm going to click up here and control period and remove unnecessary usings. Okay, we got a bunch of using statements we don't need. Now, one thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need uh, a NuGet package called CSV Helper. And to do that, I go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution, and go up to Browse and CS, CSV Helper. And here it is right there. Click it, select, install. So I have to accept the license and look down in the output, successfully installed. I can get rid of this now. And I've got, um, I've got to do a using statement using CS, CSV helper. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to need um, we're going to be do, doing some I.O., so we're going to need using system.io because we're going to be doing some files and we're going to be using CSV helper, so we're going to need those too. So now we said each row of the CSV is going to re represent one object of the elements class that we just um, generated. So we're going to need a list of elements objects to represent all of these. So the first thing I want to do is do a list elements and I'm going to call it records. So you can see it's complaining because I don't have system collections generic. So I will add that. So the next thing I need to do is set up uh, reading of my file. So I'm going to do a using var reader equals new stream reader. And I have to add the path to the file. So in my case, it's going to be at d colon documents and it's called logic.csv. Okay, so now basically I've told it I want to read this file called documents.csv or logic.csv. And I need another using, using var csv equals new csv reader. We'll call it reader. And we have to do a culture info dot invariant culture. And then we're going to equal CSV dot get records. elements to list. So now what I've done is I've basically just set a list of elements objects and I've called it records. Then I've set up a standard stream reader to read in the file, the CSV file. And then here the CSV reader is from CSV helper and it takes that reader and generates a new CSV reader. And we use that in CSV Helper to go through and get all the records in that um, list of elements and convert that to a list. So at this point, this records has all of the records of, from the file. So now let's step through this. I'll put a breakpoint here. And um, we'll start it and see what we get. Okay, so um, here I've got records count 17. And you can see um, for each element, I've got 
the bin number, the element type, the is fault, and status. Okay, so it successfully read in all of those and assigned them to uh, 17 elements objects and filled in their um, properties. So we're all set to go. So now let's say I want to look at all of the records that I brought in. Well, that is surprisingly simple. Uh, what we can do is we go here and we can drag and drop a data grid view onto my form. All right. And we will size it. And this is data grid view one. All right. So all I have to do is tell that data grid view um, that I want it to have a data source of this records. OK, so I want to automatically map and I'll say data grid data grid view one dot data source equals records and I'm done. So all I've done is I've said, OK, data grid view one, this data table, I want you to use this records uh, list as the source of your data. So I start it up and there you go. It has successfully mapped all of that data that I read in from the CSV. It has brought that into a data grid in the Windows Forms application. So now one other thing I want to mention, you notice here you've got these using statements and they're kind of like the using statements here that reference external libraries. Well, the other use for this using statement is to properly dispose of resources when you no longer need them. So these, this is kind of recommended by the CSV helper folks on their website on how to uh, access the CSV helper methods. We've got the records um, list of elements defined outside, so that will survive. But this is just a way to, to dispose of uh, the resources correctly. So now just a, a little bit more information about this um, data grid view. Um, you can add very, very easily, you can add uh, rows to that data grid view by just adding a, another element to the records, the list of elements. When you add a record to that list, it automatically is bound to this data grid view, so it automatically updates. So I've got um, five editions of records to my um, list of elements and we'll run it and we'll see that we've added five empty records because it's it automatically updates and you can see I've got one two three four five it fills it in with zeros so I've just added uh, five records and if I want I can fill those in I can initialize them give them a name and a value for each of the um, properties and I can run it and you can see now it updates all of the values. So it's once you've got this, it's very easy to automatically update the data grid view by updating and adding a new record or a new column or whatever. So anyway, it's easy to generate a CSV file. It's very easy in a few lines of code here to read it in to your C Sharp Windows Forms application to put it in a data grid view only with four lines of code here and also to populate uh, your class objects inside your code automatically. So really wonderful. Uh, I recommend you take a look at CSV Helper. Uh, very useful. Um, and again, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon. And especially notify uh, if you think there are other people who might benefit or might like it, please let them know on the forums or whatever. I really appreciate it. So take care and have a really good day. Thanks.